Welcome to the culture. We rest at the pulse of the community, providing all things news, music, fashion events, and everything that we talk about in between. It's a lifestyle. We are the culture. Hi, and welcome to The Culture. I'm your host, Jessica Garrett Modkins, and joining me today is the director of the Perez Art Museum, Miami, Franklin Sermons. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here on The Culture. It is a pleasure to have you join us, sir. And I'm just going to say it. I am of age, and I can't tell you uh, how many times I've seen someone that looks like me flourish in the industry that you have been able to do, uh, to do all of the great things that you've been able to do. Tell us, how did you land in this field? Well, how about first off, so appreciate your words. Um, you know, I, I, I grew up in New York City. Um, Grew up going to not only a place that a lot of people have heard of, like the Metropolitan Museum of Art, but I also grew up going to a place called the Studio Museum in Harlem. And that's a museum that is dedicated to the arts of, of Africa and the diaspora. So I, it was kind of around. It was something that um, was a part of growing up, but wasn't necessarily something you know I thought about in terms of a career, that's for sure. Uh, but eventually, having studied and getting kind of lucky, uh, I think in many ways, um, somehow I ended up in, in in museums and in the space of the arts. It began with writing and just began with writing and then looking at art became something to write about, to be perfectly honest. Mm -hmm. Just like a book or a piece of music or a record, um, it was uh, something that would allow for you to talk about it as as an object or as a work of art uh but also something that you could um riff off of and and kind of make your own i think so that's kind of how i got into this space and what is what would you define art to be because i have heard it uh described defined uh many different ways what is what is art to you so to me um it, it is it is I think many things that we could say are vehicles for art, books, music, theater, dance, um, art objects. And so in the context of the museum, it's, it's often in the form of paintings, sculptures, videos. But really, art is everything that, that is produced from creativity. And that can be an idea. It can be a set of rules. Um, it doesn't have to necessarily be a material object. Uh, so I have a broad definition of art, I'd say. I appreciate that, art, that, that definition because I, I too believe that it is a lot more than what uh, people try to classify. Um, and, but we're, we're here to talk about your love, Miami's Jewel, the Perez Art Museum. Let's delve in and take a peek at the beauty of the art museum. Sounds good. Beautiful patio, just absolutely beautiful. Franklin, uh, your website describes the museum as a modern and contemporary art museum dedicated to collecting and exhibiting international art. In fact, in my opinion, you are Miami's premier museum for the Black diaspora of art exhibits. 
I want to think that that is intentional and that that falls directly under your leadership. Is is that the case? It absolutely is. I mean, and, you know, and I'll go back. Right. So having having um, grown up in 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 Harlem and, and having that kind of um, background experience, um, the diversity of thought as we think about it within museums is something that was there from the beginning, which I was trying to allude to. Um, our, our institution actually began in 1984 and began with the idea that art museums could be a place for people to come together, potentially understand each other a little bit better, especially at a time in Miami, um, you know, when, when I think that was challenging or difficult to find. It probably still is in many regards, uh, but, but that moment of the early 1980s here with its deep and, and um, impactful um, presence around immigration, um, the not so probably positive outlook around things um, like crime uh, that was happening at that time that a magazine like Time Magazine called Miami at that time, um, Paradise Lost. But the museum was was made to tackle these kind of issues, to help people see each other a little bit more whole, a little bit more clearly. And that's what we're trying to tap into today. So I give you that background. We began in 1984. We became a collecting institution down on Flagler, downtown, right across from Government Center um, in 1994. And then moved into this beautiful building that you just saw in 2013. And one of the initiatives when the building opened in 2013 in this vast new space, right on the large, um, uh, what was called Museum Park, which is now Maurice Ferre Park, was to provide a space for, every, for everyone. And so one of the ways in which the institution went about that, because I wasn't here yet, was the establishment of what is called uh, the Fund for Black Art. And that began with a affiliate group called the Ambassadors, um, predominantly members of the Black community here in Miami. Mm -hmm. And so I've tried to really push off of that initiative, build upon it and, and, and grow it together with our community here and also around the country, if not also around the world. And at this point in time, you know, we've been very fortunate. Um, you've seen Art and Soul. You know, we've, we've instituted this big event in February every year. Every fall, we also do a kind of learning session where we bring in an art collector from somewhere and talk about their relationship to collecting and Black art. Most recently, I think it was um, Elliot Perry, uh, the basketball player who, who played for Memphis and is now one of the owners on the, on the, Grizzly, on the Grizzlies. So we try to um, to mix it up a little bit, but it's one of I think one of the most prideful aspects um, of the museum for me and 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 I think for many of us. So we're just trying to keep building on it, you know, get you get back in there, Jessica, um, next year and uh, keep building this thing that I think we all can call our own. At least that's the idea. Well, you do an excellent job at allowing the the neighboring communities and the entire Black diaspora here in South Florida feel a part of it. I think that that is a credit to who you are. And thank you for taking us into your mindset. Um, because as a curator, I'm sure that there are some things that you immediately know that you need to bring as an exhibit to have as a part of PAM. Tell us some of the things that are important to you and what you actually look for. Absolutely. So, you know, one of the things about going back and thinking about that history and thinking about the foundation of the museum is that I think that it gives us a great um, uh, jumping board for the future. And with that in mind, what we've tried to do over the last five years, all under the rubric of a uh, strategic plan, an institutional strategic plan, is that we wanted to lean into those things, right? So we wanted to say that the way that we go about presenting exhibitions, programs, every single thing we do, the diversity of our staff is all part and parcel of seeing things through what we call a Miami lens. And I believe that if we are to look through that Miami lens, then it means that we should be the best museum in the world at presenting the work 
of Latin America and the Caribbean, and we look toward the African diaspora. And that's kind of what, what we're trying to do. Not that we won't do other things, because we do, and we will always act internationally as we go about presenting modern and contemporary art and ideas, but we want to be the best at, at, at presenting the work of Latin America and the Caribbean and looking towards the African diaspora. And I think that's what we've tried to do. So we've brought in exhibitions like, you know, works on paper show by Jean-Michel Basquiat several years ago. Um, many exhibitions. Uh, also, I think a point of, of pride in that conversation is our commitment to women artists who in the past have not been seen to the degree that they are today. So we've done large exhibitions on artists like Teresita Fernandez, who was actually born here in Miami, lives in New York, um, artists like Beatriz Gonzalez. And one of the, the, the interesting things that I find also is that, you know, it's not just the language that we use, but it's our commitment, our demonstrated commitment. Like you used the word intentionality earlier. And I think we've been intentional about these things. And it's not, you know, it, we're trying to lean into it, but it's something that has existed for a while. I think we are one of the few, I know we are one of the few institutions where a museum could say the very first work of art that we purchased for the collection was made by a black woman, Lorna Simpson, a photographer who lives in New York, an incredible woman who we honored at a gala several years ago. Um, so there's this, this kind of commitment that comes out of here that defines who we are while hopefully representing us and representing our, our community here in Miami. And we try to do that uh, at all times, permanent collection and through exhibitions. Being intentional, let's stay on that track for a moment. Um, I did do some digging and found out that within the first four months of a year pre-pandemic, you had over 150,000 visitors. I do believe that that has a lot to do. What? Tell us a little bit about your permanent exhibits. Yeah, for sure. Um, so in the last four years, what we've we've done is we've almost doubled the size of the collection. And we've done that with with, with intentionality in terms of collecting, you know, uh, I would say within that mission and vision that we talked about. So we are showing artists who live in Miami, who grew up in Miami, but we're also showing a range of artists from diasporas wide and far. One of two, I'll give you two examples. Um, one show just closed in Nashville, which is a show that traveled of our permanent collection, a selection of artists um, from the Cuban diaspora. Uh, artists who have um, either left the island and art, some artists who still live on the island. And that was an exhibition called On the Horizon. Um, my belief, you know, in, in terms of our mission and vision, which we talked about, means that no one should be able to present the work of, of Cuban artists better than us. And so we're really proud about that. We did a large catalog and a smaller catalog. And the exhibition just ended in Nashville at the Frist Museum after it had been with us a few years ago. Likewise, when we reopened uh, after COVID, we were able to put on an exhibition called Allied with Power, which was an exhibition of artists solely from the African diaspora and from all over, many South African artists because we had traveled there a couple of years prior. Um, but to be able to do that you know, and fill the entire um, special exhibition galleries with works that are from the diaspora and that are from our collection is where our commitment is. And I would just add to that, and, um, when you walk into the museum, there are two galleries downstairs. When you go to the left, you enter into a room that is filled with works of art that are about abstraction. And when I say abstraction, I just mean, you know, things that you can't necessarily identify, um, geometric kind of lines and colors and, contours, but not trying to, to define anything. Just so happens that a lot of those artists um, are from our region. Um, and so we're proud to be able to show artists like Carmen Herrera, an artist who died actually this past year at the age of 106, a Cuban woman who uh, has shown all over the world at that point and, and, and somebody who holds pride of place in our collection. And the other gallery, you're gonna see works of representational character or figurative you know, things that are demonstrably uh, images of people. And, and so that's another way we go about things. And, uh, and a lot of those people happen to be people of color in that gallery. So we're trying to highlight not only our 
presence as 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 people who think abstractly and in complex and nuanced ways um, that aren't always you know so easily readable, but also to then illustrate who we are and to be able to see ourselves within the artworks that are on view is something that I think is really important. Excellent. And historically speaking, why do you think that France was more open to receiving Black art, Black music uh, prior to the U.S.? I think I understand what's what happened, but can you yeah. articulate that rationale for us? Oh, for sure. I mean, you know, wow, we are, uh, it's, it's, we're continuing to grapple every day with the vestiges of slavery and the not so um, not so old vestiges of, of racism in this country that, that continue to, to take all of us back every day. Um, but at a period of time um, after World War I and, and, and especially around World War II, um, you know, leaving the United States for an artist who was black, um, it, it gave them a space to create art that didn't exist in this country. So I'm thinking of, of, of artists um, who were able to go to France, as you mentioned, and, and actually be seen for, for being artists and not being seen for being black artists or even American artists for that matter, um, just for being seen as artists. And that was the kind of space that was was available to them. And, and it's something that we see in the, the work of um, of Josephine Baker, for instance, uh, an incredible performer, an incredible dancer, singer, entertainer uh, who could not quite um, do what she wanted to do in this country, but certainly found a way to do that in Paris and in France. Powerful words. They were seen. They were seen. That's. That's powerful. Now, um, someone who's graduating from college and they're interested in actually making a career out of their talent. They are a black artist. Any advice you can give to them? Yes. Look, look and look some more. Just be absolutely 100 percent aware of, of art and of artists and what people are doing, who those who you admire and those who you don't admire. Just to fulfill, you know, the, the the kind of mind with the experience of art in order to find your own unique path. I think that is the most crucial thing, um, and we're here for that. You know, I have a a team of four curators who love talking about art and love talking to artists. So please um, don't hesitate to come by. And as it relates to your community programs and initiatives that you have for the youth, your outreach efforts, can you tell our viewers a little bit about some of the programming that you have going on at PAM? Oh, for sure. Um, we have a, a wonderful uh, head of education named Marie Vickles. And uh, Marie also does uh, time as a um, curator at large at the Little Haiti Cultural Center um, and has established programs with um, say Overtown Youth Center. Um, also, a, what I think one of the most impactful programs is that of Art Detectives, um, a program that began with um, Breakthrough Miami and began with the links um, in Miami here, most importantly. And that program allows for uh, kids um, who are coming in, uh, who haven't had you know, experiences in museums, who haven't had that type of exposure um, and not only bringing them into the museum to, to talk to our, our teaching artists, but to also do things with the police. And I think obviously the, the events of the last few years bear <clears throat> the significance of such a program. And again, it goes back to, can we understand each other a little bit better? You know, you stand in front of a work of art. I see something a little bit different than you see based on your past experience. Why is that? Or how is that? And how can we just share those things and try and find not common ground, but at least respect for each other's viewpoints? And that's what that, I think that's one of the most important programs we do. The art detective programs that you have, Pam in the Neighborhood, Pam Art to Go. If you haven't heard about it, go to their website and check it out. Uh, Franklin, before you leave, 
you touched on this earlier, and I can't think of a better way to close our show. Uh, annually, you present Art and Soul. It's yeah. the premier exhibit to kick off Black History Month. Uh, let's take a look at this year's recap. Is my favorite. Tell me, what is the premise of Art and Soul? It, it's a lot of fun, F U N, raising going on. But tell us about the premise. Jessica, thank you. I mean, that's what it's supposed to be. It's it's a celebration. It's a celebration of not only Black art and artists, which it very much is that evening. We celebrate the acquisition of artworks into the collection. We bring the artists in, have them say a few words. We've been blessed by great food. Uh, last year was the likes of Chef Alexander Smalls from Harlem. The year before that, Chef Marcus Samuelson. And we have a big treat coming up in February 11 of 2023. I can't mention the chef yet, but almost there. Um, and we celebrate each other. That's what it's really, to me, that's what it's about. When we look around the room and see each other and, and acknowledge each other, uh, that there's no better feeling than that. Yes, it is Black excellence at its finest. Thank you so much, Franklin, for joining us. And we invite you to come back to the culture at any time and let our audience know of all of the great things that you're doing at the Perez Art Museum. Thank Jessica, you so thank you. Thank you so much for having me on the culture. And I really appreciate what you do here in Miami. So thanks a lot. Thank you. And thank you to the Culture family. Make sure you come back tonight at 6 p.m. for another edition of My Two Cents. Grab a drink for all of the shenanigans and for a good time. Check us out live on YouTube, Facebook, or Video Mix TV. Thanks for tuning in. The Culture is produced and owned by the Culture Media Group and cannot be reproduced or broadcast without written consent. All rights reserved 2022.